five W's of the body of Christ. The what, the when, the where, the why, and the who. I bring this message before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just pray it will be a blessing to you and that you'll be enriched by understanding. And even now as you sit there and think about what are the five W's, what are the what's the where, how did the body of Christ form, when, where, why, who, and uh, try and fill in these blanks as you sit in there for the sermon and teaching unravels. So we just pray that um, Jesus Christ will be glorified in this, and uh, we pray that you will be enriched with these blessings. The unsearchable riches of the Lord reminds us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. So if we look at the five W's of the body of Christ, um, I'm reminded of a scripture where it tells us in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, it speaks about the house of God, which is um, the church of God. And it goes on in verse 16 and says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, just like the body of Christ, manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory, as the body of Christ will be received up into glory. It goes on and says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, or depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So we see there's a proliferation in the end times of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils to persuade you otherwise than receiving this. As King Agrippa has said, you've almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Acts chapter 26. So the five W's of the body of Christ. The what? What is the body of Christ? Let's start with that. You'll notice from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 32. It says, Give none offense neither to Israel, nor to the Gentile, nor to the church of God. So we see that there are three people groups. You have Israel, the Jews, things pertaining to them. You have the Gentiles, the nations. And then you have the church of God, which is the body of Christ. We know from Colossians tells us that Christ is the head and we are the body. And so what is it? It's essentially the body of Christ is the Christians um, that have received Jesus Christ as both Lord and Savior that have confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord and believe on Him as recorded in Romans 10. And so they come into the body of Christ then Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ and seals us, according to Ephesians, more than once. Um, he tells us there that uh, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, so, it's a body of believers where Christ is the head, essentially. Those two components is the body of Christ. And when, when, did, the, when did the body of Christ Start. Well, I'd like to actually perhaps do that for just now, not quite now. So, where where did the body of Christ begin? So, we know the, the church in Acts chapter 2 was primarily Israel, that the kingdom was re-offered to Israel after the beheading of John the Baptist and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. God, by His grace and mercy, on one more occasion, in Acts chapter 2, offers the kingdom to Israel. That if they all repent, according to Acts chapter 3.19, He will blot out their transgressions, their iniquities, their sins. And He will receive them as a nation for salvation. And they reject it. And it was demonstrated to us in their rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 7 with the stoning of Stephen. So, once, twice, thrice offered, but Israel rejects. And Paul actually tells us in Titus 3.10, he says, The man which is an heretic, which is divisive, in other words, after the first and second admonition, reject. So you notice here, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, um, let your word be admonished, 
Bible tells us, so here, likewise, we see that God brings him through. He sends John the Baptist. He sends his own son, Jesus Christ. And then he sends someone like Stephen. And after the second or third admonition here, we see that Israel is rejected. And I've mentioned before in Romans chapter 9, 10 and 11, is Romans 9 is essential. Uh, Israel's past election, how you saw that they were the apple of God's eye, the chosen people. They were a nation distinct from the others, um, not rendered amongst them. And then in Romans chapter 10, it tells us about Israel's current, Israel's present rejection. How they have been uh, rejected. It tells us there, for instance, in um, Romans 11, uh, it tells us that they were not only being rejected, but they've fallen. And how they've been cast away, in verse 15 of Romans 11. And um, all these things with regards to them falling is for us to come into the kingdom, for us to receive salvation. That their falling away is for the riches of the Gentiles and for the Christians. And their casting off brings us into, um, into the picture. So um, we see there with regards to Romans, it's speaking about them past the, the, when they were elected, their present when they were, are currently rejected, and their future when they shall be restored. But we are currently in the period where they are rejected. They are fallen away. They are in blindness. It tells us the little bit further on in chapter 11, verse 25. And it's all a picture of, of, of what Israel is going through at the moment, where the body of Christ, uh, we, are, we have our eyes opened uh, unto the things of God. So, where did the body of Christ begin? Well, it actually begin, began in Antioch, in Syria, where the kingdom of Israel program was Jerusalem. So God had told them in Acts chapter 1 that they were starting Jerusalem, beginning Jerusalem, and from there, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts. And so they were, in fact, for much of the book of Acts, Israel, the church, the kingdom program church, even in Acts chapter 15, they're still in the council, when they have the council in Acts 15, they're still in Jerusalem. And Paul and Barnabas came down to Jerusalem and met them. And that's recorded for us in Galatians chapter 2, for instance. Um, so, they are in, in uh, Paul is in Antioch, and Peter is in Jerusalem. And we've, I've noted this before, I've mentioned to you, where um, Peter was preaching to the circumcision, And he was, um, he had the gospel of the kingdom, of the kingdom program. And these are recorded for us in Galatians chapter 2 verse 7. So you see he has a different message and he's a different man, message and ministry. The ministry is to Israel. It's not to the Gentile. He was reprimanded for going to and, and sitting down and fellowshipping with the Gentile. If you read beyond Genesis, uh, Acts chapter 10, after the, he met with the um, Roman centurion. So, you'll note this, there's a distinction with the body of Christ and Israel with the place. So Paul departs out of Antioch, Barnabas went to go and fetch him in, in Tartus and, and bring him to Antioch, and from Antioch was the base. Antioch is very important because in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, it tells us this is the first time that they were called Christians. Prior to this, for instance, in Acts 9, verse 2, they were called followers of the way. The way. Now, what we understand is that the Jews, Israel, called Christians 
followers of the way. They called him the way. The way is mentioned about five times in the book of Acts. Even Paul mentions that he was going to go and persecute those which followed the way. And But when they get to Antioch, Syria, the Gentiles call them Christians. And the word Christian or Christians is used three times in the Bible. King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26 said to Paul, Thou hast almost persuaded me to be a Christian. So it was the Gentiles that looked at the followers of Christ, Christian, follower of Christ, and called them Christians. Whereas the Jews looked at the followers of Christ and said to them, they are of the way. And remember Jesus Christ says to us in John 14 verse 6, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And through Him, we've got to get into the body of Christ. And if we're in the body of Christ, we are sealed. Our redemption is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Both Ephesians 3 and Ephesians uh, um, chapter 4 um, echo that for us. So, that's essentially where... So you see there's a, there's a distinction with regards to Israel and the body of Christ. Already just on the way. I'm going to come back to the way... Now, in fact, I'll mention the when. The when, you'll notice that when did the body of Christ begin? There are Bible scholars out there that really search the scriptures to try and find out the fundamental answer to this question. And that is, when did the body of Christ, can someone just tell me when is there a date? Is there a point? Is there a beginning? When did the body of Christ begin? And they don't really come out with an answer. If you're Pentecostal or Charismatic, you will say it's Acts chapter 2. But we know Acts chapter 2 was a partial fulfillment of the Feast of Pentecost. So a lot of the Christians hone in on that. It's called classic dispensationalism. At the beginning of a dispensing of time. That they try and say, well, that's the beginning. Because that's when Christ poured out His Spirit. That's when the Holy Spirit came down. Um, it coincided with the Feast of Pentecost. And they, they try and bring the body of Christ into the period of prophecy because essentially Acts chapter 2 was the fulfillment of prophecy as spoken of Joel and Peter elaborated on these things and taught on these things referencing to Joel but if you go through what Joel prophesied and what was fulfilled you'll see it was only partially fulfilled because the sun wasn't darkened and the moon wasn't darkened and, and, and things like this so um, they were speaking in tongues and in other tongues and all that, but these were signs to Israel that the kingdom is at hand. And I've spoken to you on countless times before about the millennial kingdom at hand, um, which was deferred after the stoning of Stephen, which came later. So they still, in Acts chapter 2, this is the, the church I spoke to you just a few weeks back, two weeks back approximately, on the churches. You see the church in the wilderness. The church at the time of Christ, Matthew 16, when he says that um, the gates of uh, Hades shall not prevail. And he speaks about um, the stone and, uh, and he mentions the church there. So a lot of people, because they see the word church, they automatically think it's the church in the New Testament. It's the body of Christ. When they see the churches mentioned in Revelation 2 and 3, those seven churches, they automatically say, because they see the synonymous of the church, they automatically just group them together. They just put all the churches into one category and says, oh, well, that's going to be the body of Christ. But we notice that there's different churches in different dispensations. So Acts chapter 2 is not the formation of the body of Christ. It couldn't have been the formation of the body of Christ yet because that was around Jerusalem. And I've just pointed to you now that it didn't happen in Jerusalem. It happened in Antioch. Um, so that's the first discrepancy you have there. The second one is when we're going to look at when we notice that there's a transition. There's a transition with regards to the formation of the body of Christ. It's People like to have a specific time point, a date, um, when it occurred, when it started. It began on such and such. It, for them that needs to be cut and dry, day and night. Um, but there's more, it's more like a twilight, like a transition. So what you'll notice, for instance, most will break the book of Acts into two components. And they'll say, essentially the first 12 chapters is primarily on Peter. And then from Acts chapter 13 to Acts chapter 28, that's on Paul. 
And they categorize Acts under those two spokesmen, Peter and Paul. And that's, that's their division that they do. Okay? But if you look and if you study closer, what you will note, and I'll give you these scriptures, and you in your own time can check them out. And what you'll note is in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1, I'm just going to put 1 to 8. It's Peter. And then Acts chapter 9, from 1 to 31, it's Paul. So Peter gets one mention, Paul gets another mention. Then it goes and reverts back to Peter from Acts 9, 32 to um, the end of Acts chapter 10, for instance. It comes back to Peter. Then you've got still with Peter up all the way to 11 verse 18. That's all Peter. Then you've got Paul mentioned again in 11 19 to the end of that chapter, which is verse 30. That's Paul. So he gets another mention. Then it reverts to Peter again for the third time. And Peter's mentioned Acts chapter 12. So he gets another mention. And then Acts chapter 13, it's Paul. And Peter only gets one more mention in the book of Acts. Just briefly, at the Council of Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 15, Peter just speaks for five verses from 7 to 11. But James took the authority with regards to the meeting. So, approximately, with regards to the transition, you've got Peter, three times, takes priority. And then you've got Paul transitioning in on three occasions. So when does the body of Christ begin? Well, it's a transition. First you get Peter, then you get Paul. Then you get Peter, then you get Paul. Then you get Peter, and then you get Paul. So it's this transition. It's not Acts chapter 2 where the Holy Spirit comes down, and that's the beginning of the church. That's, uh, that's, that's The Pentecostals go with that. The Charismatics go with that. A lot of the classic dispensations go with that because they see the tongues and particularly with the, with the Pentecost and the Charismatics, they see the move of the Holy Spirit and they go with those things. But primarily what you note is that the body of Christ, it was a transition. God is still dealing with Israel in the early parts of Acts. It's all on Israel. And slowly it emerges to working with the Gentiles. Now, what's interesting is not only is it this transition where there's three in this three, but when it says who comes into the body of Christ, well, it's the Gentiles, mostly. Jews also come in, but mostly it's the Gentiles. And we note that on three occasions, all in the book of Acts, so I'm just going to give you the scriptures here, on three occasions, in, in Acts chapter 13 verse 46, in Acts 18 verse 6, and in Acts 28 28, on three occasions, Paul says to the Jew, now remember what I told you, Titus 3.10, if any man is an heretic, after the first and second admonition reject. On three occasions, he says to Israel, he says to the Jews, I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm going to the Gentiles. I'm going to the Gentiles. On three occasions, he warns them. He tells them that he's going to the Gentiles. So the formation of the body of Christ, the members in the body of Christ, are mostly Gentiles. There are Jews that come in, and there were even people in the body of Christ before Paul. Romans chapter 16 verse 7. Paul speaks about Adronicus and Janiah. Fellow prisoners, fellow workers who were in Christ before him. So even Paul, a lot of people look at Paul and they say he was the first person into the body of Christ. 
But not according to Romans chapter 16 verse 7. By the time Paul got into the body of Christ, it was already formed in existence. And although Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, as Peter is an apostle to Israel, according to Galatians 2 7, it says, Paul says that he was a, an apostle to the uncircumcision. And Peter would take the gospel to the circumcision. There was a division, a distinction. Peter stayed in Israel and ministered to the Jews. Paul went from Antioch and he went to the known world as far as Rome on his fourth missionary journey. So there's a distinction. One is going to the circumcised, the other one is going to the uncircumcised. The one is only for Israel, only go to the Jew. In fact, in Acts chapter 11 verse 19, at that point in time, Acts chapter 11 verse 19. Verse 19 here. Verse 19, verse 20, and verse 21. There's three distinctions. It says that in verse 19, they only went to the Jew. You can read it up in Acts chapter 11 verse 19. It was Jew only. They went beyond Jerusalem to um, um, parts of, of, of Syria and beyond, but they only went into the synagogues and they only ministered to the Jews. They were not going to the Gentiles yet. Verse 19, only to the Jews. So you've got from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 11 verse 19, that part, and they're mostly primarily only going to the Jews. Now when you speak about, hang a second, what about Acts chapter 10? With Peter receiving the vision to go to the Roman centurion. Well, the Roman centurion is one that kept the program of Israel. Because with regards to before God rejected them in this current dispensation, to get into the kingdom, you had to come through Israel. It was through Israel's rise that we were saved in the Old Testament as Gentiles. They were a light unto the Gentiles. Okay? Isaiah chapter 49 tells us this. But they failed in that. And so with that, you've got this transition where in Romans chapter 11, as I mentioned, they fall and they are cast in a way and then becoming a stumbling block, and their blindness means that the Gentiles come in, and we provoke them to jealousy, and we are recon reconciled to God, and we come into receiving the light from God, no longer having to go through Israel, but we can come directly to God. There's one mediator between God and man, and that man, Jesus Christ. And we can come directly to Him and through Him. We no longer have to go through Israel, the Apostles' Doctrine, and the Kingdom Program. We can confess and believe and be saved without having to go through the battle of goats and the ordinances of the high priests or through the temple in Jerusalem or becoming a proselyte. So in verse 20, it talks about the proselytes, the Grecians that became Jews, the proselytes. And we notice with the proselytes, they were mentioning Acts chapter 2. One of the, amongst all the nations, the 16 or 17 nations that are mentioned in Acts chapter 2 that were present, that heard their language spoken, and were speaking of tongues. There were proselytes there. So a proselyte was like the Ethiopian eunuch was a proselyte. He had come to Jerusalem to keep the feast. And then he met Philip on the way back. But nevertheless, and then you've got many people which are the Gentiles. So if you look at these three verses, you'll notice that you've got the Jew only in verse 19. You've got the Grecians, the proselytes, turn Jews, become Jews in verse 20. And then you've got the many people, the Gentiles in verse 21. You'll notice the three distinct groups from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 32. Give none offense neither to the Jew nor to the Gentile nor to the church of God. And you'll see them here, these three distinct groups mentioned in Acts chapter 11, 19, 20, 21. Then you've got why. Well, why 
is the body of Christ formed? And the body of Christ is formed because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the sacrificial lamb. And if they received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, their sins, as I mentioned earlier, Acts 3.19, would have been blotted out. They would not have had to have gone through the seven years tribulation, which is still to come for them to fulfill prophecy, because they are a prophecy people. We're not a prophecy people. We're a mystery people. The Bible tells us in Romans 16.25 that the body of Christ was hid before the beginning. It tells us that um, we, we are hid in Him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9, we are hid in Him, hid in Christ. We weren't part of the prophecy program. So all the, the people that are trying to put us in prophecy or trying to look for the body of Christ in the Old Testament or look for the body of Christ in Acts chapter 2 because Acts chapter 2 partially fulfills prophecy with regards to Pentecost. They are misappropriating the body of Christ. They're putting the body of Christ in Israel's program. And they're putting things that pertain to Israel, the covenants, the feasts, etc., etc. They're putting that into the body of Christ period. And they're mixing them. They're cross-pollinating. And this is where you get a lot of false teaching. And there's becoming more and more of it and more of it evident in our time. As I mentioned to you, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. A seducing of spirits and a doctrine of devils. There is a lot of seducing of spirits out there. There's a lot of doctrines of devils out there. Not everything that you watch on YouTube or not every book that you buy at a Christian bookstore is anointed, is blessed, are the oracles of God. You've got to be very careful, discerning, knowing your word. So, why was the body of Christ formed? Well, they rejected Jesus Christ, and in the rejection of Jesus Christ, He made a way for the Gentiles to come in, and which resulted in their fall, their demise, the diminishing of Israel, was the reconciling of the world. It tells us that he, we were um, great is the mystery of godliness, as I mentioned to you earlier. God was manifest in the flesh, became Jesus, Jesus Christ in the flesh. They rejected Him. Justified in the Spirit, day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came down at the Pentecost. The Jews rejected the Holy Spirit, evident in Acts 7 when they stoned Stephen. Seen of angels. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8 said it had the princes of this world known about the body of Christ. And the things that God had planned, they would not have crucified Jesus Christ. Preached unto the Gentiles, that's you and me. Preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world. And received up into glory. And that time is coming when this body of Christ will be received up to glory. And then God will continue with this prophetic program that He has for Israel. Which is now on hold. It has ceased for the moment. When a, a, a pause, a period, a parenthesis, and only when the body of Christ is removed does he start working with the Jews again, with Israel, to fulfill prophecy. Why, who, where, when, what? Now, it tells us with the Jews, for instance, that prophets came to Antioch from Jerusalem and there was a dearth Acts 11 there was a dearth in Jerusalem in Judea and they took up a collection and they actually sent Paul and Barnabas down to Jerusalem with it because what happened because of the kingdom program and in accordance of scripture the Jews during Acts chapter 2 for instance had sold their belongings and their goods and their land and um, it tells us there for instance at the end of Acts chapter 4 about Joseph's Joseph's surname Barnabas who was a Levite from Cyprus and he sold a piece of land and laid it down at the apostles feet 
And the reason why he did it was that he was a Levite. And Levites, according to the Old Testament program, weren't allowed to own land. So he was convicted. And he sells it and he brings the money and lays it at the apostles' feet. And then it begins in Acts chapter 5 verse 1. It says, And Ananias and Sapphira, they sold a piece of land. They did likewise. They wanted to be seen amongst the brethren of giving and to take acknowledgement for that. For the great things that they are doing. Meanwhile, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, it says, that the excellency of power be of God and not of us. But many people, like Third John I'd spoken to you before, um, how, how people try to take the preeminence of Christ and the importance of Christ and, and try and uh, power and numbers and circulation and things like that mean much to them because they like the Gentiles. They lord it over others. So they like to put themselves on a pedestal and have many under them and following them so that they can be looked up to and highly esteemed. But um, so these Jews, like Jesus' teachings, Matthew 5 to 7, and the rich young ruler, which Jesus Christ said, sell all your belongings, they've, they've, they've given away, they've sold, that nobody was in want, and then this dearth hits, this famine, this drought, and then they become in want, and the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is pushed out. The kingdom of uh, is it was at hand. It's been pushed out because they rejected God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They rejected Him, so it's been pushed out. And while they're in this period of time, they find themselves in want. So they take a collection in Antioch and they send it down by the hands of Paul and Barnabas to Judea, Judea to the church there, uh, to bless them. And I'm reminded in Acts chapter 21 with Philip, who, who had the four daughters that prophesied. He was in Caesarea. So you already see that some Jews understand that it's deferred, it's delayed. And um, as I mentioned, Janiah and Adronicus earlier, that they are somewhere in, in Christ before Paul. They could understand these matters. Um, Agabus was the, the prophet that had come up. He's mentioned twice in the book of Acts, which gave the, pros the, the, the prophecy about the dearth. All in the, the known world. So, if I can wrap things up, the five W's of the body of Christ, if I can just zone in on one, and that's the when, because I know that I, I have a friend of mine that is looking for the answer to this question. <laughs> and I think all these other things pay into insignificance for him. But that question. And in Acts chapter 13, for instance, that's primarily when the transition takes full swing and when the body of Christ is formed. Because if you look at it, you've got the man, you've got the message, and you've got the ministry. And the man is Paul. He tells us in Romans 16.25, he calls it my gospel. So he's a man that had met in Acts chapter 15 with Peter, James and John and the other apostles. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 6, he met with these people that seemed to be somewhat but he added to them. They added nothing to him. And when he speaks about the gospel, it's not the same gospel that Peter was preaching about. And Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. He calls it my gospel because he received it by revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel that he received is the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 and 4. And it was contrary to what the disciples were preaching. They were preaching another gospel. He was preaching the gospel of faith by justification. And the first time that justification, the message of justification is mentioned for us. Is in Acts chapter 13 verse 38 to 39. And I spoke on the book of James the other day. And I showed you the correlation 
the contrast between James chapter 2, 24, where it was faith by works, and now I've shown you in the book of Romans chapter 3, 28, where it was, it was justification by faith, by grace. And we saw this difference, this contrast, because James is speaking to the 12 lost tribes of Israel, to the Jews, to Israel. And Paul is speaking to the Gentiles. There's this difference. And there's a different message. And the first time that justification is mentioned is in Paul's sermon in Acts chapter 13, verses 38, 39. And that's where he mentions it. So the message changes. If you compare it to the messages, the two sermons that Peter gave, for instance, in early Acts. And this one, there's a difference. There's a contrast. And lastly, the ministry, Paul, he goes to the Gentiles. The 12 apostles are still keeping the kingdom program. They're still based in Jerusalem. Acts 15, they're still in Jerusalem. 20 years after the cross of Jesus Christ. They're still preaching to the Jew. They're still preaching John's message. You can touch on John's message when you get to Acts chapter 19, where Apollos was still with John's message. And the remission of sins. And the baptism. So, to wrap it up, the five W's of the body of Christ, if I could just hone in on when, which is a, a, a stumbling block for many people, they're trying to figure out when it happened. Was it Acts chapter 2? Or, as the classic dispensation say, or was it another time? Well, you can note through yourself, as you study, that you need to take a couple of things into consideration. Firstly, there is a transition. You get Peter, Paul, Peter, Paul, at least three times each in the book of Acts. It's not just Acts 1 to 12, Peter, 13 to 28, Paul. That's the lazy man's way on the lazy boy of studying the book of Acts. But you notice this transition like windscreen wipers going across. You'll notice that Paul operates out of Antioch. The apostles operate out of Jerusalem. There is a distinction in the very place. The Jews called them the way. In Antioch 11.26, they were called Christians for the first time. Only three times in the scriptures are they called Christians. Who? To the Gentiles on three occasions. Acts 13.46, 18.6 and 28.28. Paul says, I'm going to the Gentiles, the Gentiles, the Gentiles. You'll notice this distinction here in Acts 11 verse 19. The Jew only, there was a proselyte, and then there was many people. It starts to change. starts to transition. Not immediately, not night and day, not cut and drape. Transition. Twilight. The message we mentioned, the ministry to the Gentiles. One, two, three. You feel... So much more that I can, I can share with you, but I think my board is full, and I'm praying that you are spiritually full. I thank you for this opportunity, and God bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior. Oh